Hello. In this video, I want to show how we can unit test some C++ code, and I'm going to be using the Green Hills Integrity for, for PowerPC. So the starting point is to analyze the C++ code. I've already done that, and now I'm inside the, the TB Run tool, and this is going to allow me to do the unit testing. Let's take a look at the, the source code, and I've got a, a static linked list here. So we can see we have a constructor, destructor and a number of functions allowing us to add and remove from the, the linked list. So I've previously tested this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a sequence of test cases. So here I've got test cases for the static linked list, for node and for the dynamic linked list. Well let's take a look at the static linked list and let's import those. Right. So here we can see I've got a number of test cases. So the first test case is I'm creating my constructor and then the constructor or the object I've created from that and then using for the other tests here. And then finally, I'm going to call the, the destructor. So this linked list has got uh, a static linked list of 16 elements. And so we can see that I'm calling the, the add last, I'm calling the remove last, I'm calling this each time 17 times. So 16 times it should get the normal should do what it's supposed to do and the 17th time well hopefully it will not do anything anything bad so let's go and run this and see what happens so that's going to now do a build it's now executing on the, the green hills simulator so this is the integrity simulator and as we can see the tests have all passed so that's good and we should actually have coverage of our c code so let's just wait for that to finish and I'm expecting to get good coverage. OK, and there we can see for the static link list, I've got a 100% statement coverage, and 100% branch decision coverage. There is no MCDC inside this code. So that's good. I've, uh, I'm pretty pleased that I've, I've tested that very well. But now let's take a, a look at uh, testing it and for, for robustness. So I've got 100% coverage, this is all I need, but is this code actually robust? What happens if I give values outside of the range? Well, let, let's, let's try that. Let's create a, another sequence. This time we'll create it and we'll call it um, robustness. Let's, let's test, okay? And this time I'm going to select just the static link list. So I'm going to exclude the node, all right? And we'll go for code coverage. And I want to create stubs, so the node we're missing, so it should stub the node. I want to create any globals in case I've got any missing variables. And I'll do a test build. And let's go and, and run that. So there we can see it's done the test build, that built successfully. And if we take a look at the calls view, we can see that the static link list does indeed call this, uh, this, this node. And so the node has been stubbed. And since it's been stubbed, we could actually get it to do different things. Right. Well, what I want to do now is I've got 100% coverage. Let's see if this code is robust. So what I've done is I'm going to use the extreme test here. I've got a number of different options I can try. So if I wanted, I could even try using null case for pointer variables. That uh, often causes code to crash. Well, let's see what we've got here. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to let the tool automatically generate test cases. So there we can see it's generated 18 test cases and it's now starting to run them. So now we can see it's built it, it's run it. We're getting the data off the target and oh, we've got a problem. OK, what, what's gone wrong here? Let's take a look. Ah, well, that's not good. We've got a pointer here that's equal to null. So the code is, is, is not robust and I need to, to do something about that. All right, well, let's close down multi and uh, let that just, just run. So now it's running a, a second time and we'll leave that to, to run. OK, it's uploading the, the results. And there we can see we have a test that's suspended. So that's the test that, that caused the issue. So what I ought to do is to take a look at this test. So if we click on it, we can see over here the, the values that it's actually given to the inputs. And in this particular case, we can see we have an input that's root node next, and it set that to null. So really, I need to take a look at my source code and put it in a test to make sure that 
If this is no, then it doesn't do something that's causing it to crash. And finally, let's run once more. So, OK, so this time it should just ignore that particular test and the others should all run and pass. So once again, let that run. OK, we've got results and ooh, that's interesting. We can see here that the constructor has failed. And when we take a look, we should be able to see, well, what went wrong there? And we can see all the, the outputs. And if I went to my regression port when this is finished, we'd be able to see why this has actually failed. So let's go and take a look at the regression report. And if we scroll down, we should be able to see here we're doing a, a comparison and it failed inequality. So maybe this is not initialized to zero. Maybe the first time I run it, it just happened to be to zero. But the second time I run it, it had a different value. So it looks to me like something's not being initialized correctly by the constructor. And that's something, again, that I need to look at. And if you'd like further information, then please don't hesitate to contact LDRA. Thank you.